Groundwater is rain that has filtered through the earth and collected in aquifers underground. It's about 100 times more plentiful than surface water. If we look just uh, 15 to 18 years from now, we will see that around half of the world's population will be living in areas with water stress. So it's extremely serious to protect the resources that we have and use them mo most efficiently. And luckily Denmark has a long experience in protecting water, in mapping it, finding it and setting up the right regulation. Increase of conflicts and interest around water resources in general has opened the eyes all around the world for using groundwater because it's a more sustainable resource than surface water. And the climate change will make the surface water vary even more. But the groundwater is stable, same quality, same amount all the year round. Denmark derives 100% of its drinking water from groundwater. When properly cared for, it's much purer and requires less treatment than surface water. We've protected our water for more than 40 years, so that's what we are experiencing at the moment, that we can enjoy every day, that we have clean water coming out of the taps, that we can just drink, it's not been cleaned. It's, it's wonderful and the Danes are very proud of it. Groundwater must be used sustainably. Once damaged, it can take decades to recover. The sustainable way of using groundwater is to abstract what is a natural flow, what is a balanced flow, and not over-abstract, and mining the groundwater aquifer. And to use the sustainable way, you need to know exactly where to, to abstract the water, where to make the wells, how much to pump from each well, and have a management system that control and monitoring uh, uh, the way they abstract the water. Benefiting from groundwater requires understanding and knowledge. Denmark was already making widespread use of groundwater back in the 50s and 60s. But with more chemicals being used in households, industry and agriculture, water pollution was becoming a problem. We started a massive program in the late 70s and beginning of the 80s. But uh, you had to know something more than that you, where the waste sites were. You also had to know something about the structures in which the groundwater was flowing because this was very important otherwise you could not tell about how big risk is uh, for uh, polluting your drinking water. In order to protect the right areas, Denmark started to map the subsurface structures the water was stored in. We would like to be more in advance and try to protect and not put the pollution, the threats, where it could threat our groundwater uh, resources. So. That's why we came to a point in the 90s that uh, we must do something to protect groundwater. And therefore the parliament in Denmark, uh, they make a law. We must ensure that 100% of our water supply and drinking water can come from groundwater sources in Denmark, unpolluted groundwater sources. And when the parliament decided that, we have to make a strategy how to protect our groundwater. And to protect our groundwater, we need to do a detailed mapping, a survey of the groundwater resources to make sure that we protect the right places and uh, to make sure that in the future the groundwater will be clean and very useful for the drinking water supply. And with the new legislation, there was an increased incentive to develop new technology. The uh, SkyTem system uh, has been developed as the only uh, airborne electromagnetic uh, system to be focusing on mapping groundwater structures because that requires very detailed and very precise uh, measurements. And you have to be able to distinguish even very small changes in your signals to be able to map these groundwater resources and these aquifer layers and subsurface structures. Today we have mapped around 40% of the total area of Denmark, which have given some excellent results of where do you have the aquifers, how well are they protected and so on. We still do drillings, but first we do these large airborne geophysical surveys. So we scan the earth and then we get a fairly good picture of the earth. And then based on this, you can do follow-up on the ground with drillings to get more detailed information. This way you can say you combine the different data, the airborne geophysical data and the drillings, and you get a much more detailed information about the Earth 
than would have been possible if you only did drillings or you only did geophysics. We have done some work in, in Malaysia. We have done a large pilot project in, in Thailand here recently. We have done some work in the United States and actually in this month we are going to do a lot more work in the United States where you have a lot of drought problems. In Denmark the groundwater is clean. Um, we don't uh, have advanced treatment of the uh, groundwater. We don't add uh, chlorine uh, to disinfect the, the groundwater. We just simply drink it without any treatment at all. When you then have the quality of the groundwater and you extract it for drinking water, you have to protect those groundwater reservoirs. You have to know how to manage those groundwater reservoirs, which you have found and you have assessed the quality of. Then you have to manage it. You have to use it for drinking water, uh, drinking water supply. And therefore, you also have the management skills. So all those things go together in a, in a, a I think, total concept for dealing with groundwater. We call it groundwater management. I think there is a good holistic approach to groundwater management in Denmark.